There's a residential street in my city where the residents make an extra effort to decorate their houses for Christmas. Started in 1968, Candy Cane Lane draws people to view the Xmas lights and displays every year. Like everything in North America in the 1960s, it was assumed that people would drive down the street to look at the lights. And why not? This little residential street is wide enough for two travel lanes and two parking lanes. But in 2020, some people asked, what would Candy Cane Lane be like if there were no cars driving along it. So there was one night in 2020 and two nights in 2021 without cars driving along the street. These nights were called open street nights because the street was open to people. If memory serves me correctly, there were no open street nights in 2022, but there were three in 2023. In this bike bike nudge nudge video, I will show what a special outdoor winter event can look like with and without cars. I'll examine the accessibility of the event and the overall experience. First, let's look at geographical accessibility. My city assumes everyone drives everywhere, always. Candy Cane Lane is just one block off an arterial road and 1.5 kilometers from a major freeway. As with pretty much everywhere in my city, driving there is not a problem. Well, on very busy nights, traffic congestion does spill out onto the surrounding arterial roads. During open street nights, being close to that arterial road in an inner suburb means that you could take the bus to Candy Cane Lane. The bus that passes nearby is one of the backbone routes in the city. That means 15 to 20 minute frequencies evenings and weekends, and that's not bad for transit in North America. Of course, transit service at the other end of your journey will greatly affect your experience. When I visited open street nights, I rode my bike. The combination of El Nino and climate change has influenced the weather so that there was nearly no snow in my city so far this winter so riding was easy. It would still be possible to ride a bike through the snow during a more typical winter, but there's very little bike-specific infrastructure in the area that is plowed in the winter. As for walking, the area is almost entirely single-family sprawl. There are people who can walk to Candy Cane Lane, but the low density limits the total number. But I've just wasted the last minute of your life by talking about transit, biking, and walking. As I said before, it is assumed that everyone drives everywhere, always. On open street nights, the adjacent streets are full of parked cars and people looking for parking. Even when residents of my city cannot drive right to somewhere, they still all drive to really, really close by. That leads me to a brief mention of the convenience of leaving Candy Cane Lane. If you drive, you enter at one end and leave at the other. Easy peasy. It appeared to me that nearly everyone who visited on open street night had to find parking, walk up and back along Candy Cane Lane, and return to where they parked. So, you only need to drive the 1.5 kilometers along Candy Cane Lane to see everything, but you would have to walk 3 kilometers to see everything and get back to your SUV. As usual, I recommend riding a bike. I rode to one end, walked the length of the street because it was very busy, and then rode home from the other end. What about the persons with disabilities kind of accessibility? Yes, driving your SUV is easier. You can strap your senior relative, young child, or anyone else with limited mobility into your SUV and not release them until you've seen the lights and returned home. However, there are other options for open street nights and, actually, all the other nights. There are sleigh rides and special bus tours that go along the street. I didn't hear anyone grumbling about stepping aside for the horses, and I wouldn't mind stepping aside during open street nights for one of the city's electric buses if it was full of people with mobility issues and only passed by four or so times an hour. As for children, all the bright, colorful displays would have kept mine from complaining about how tired they were on just a three kilometer walk. I saw lots of children being pulled in wagons. If there was a usual amount of snow, parents could pull their children on toboggan. So that's the logistics of Candy Cane Lane. What about the experience? Driving along Candy Cane Lane is pretty much like driving anywhere, except there's some pretty lights outside. It's bumper to bumper much of the time and cold temperatures really show how much exhaust comes out of SUVs. You only have to talk with your family and friends inside the vehicle, or listen to your favorite Xmas carols. You'll only get to see the lights once from the middle of the street as you pass, so you'd better hope a bus or other large vehicle doesn't block your view. Speeds are low, but extended stops are not allowed, unless it's due to traffic trying to get through a stop sign. If you walk, you can go as fast or as slow as you like. I saw two houses projecting movies outside, and I stopped to watch for a few minutes. Many people walked down one side of the street and back along the other so they could get a close-up view of every house. I tended to walk down the middle of the street, but I crossed back and forth to get a better look at any house I found more interesting. I could also interact with this colorful arch someone had set up. When there are SUVs on the street, 
They're going slowly, so they're not particularly loud, but there is a constant hum of engines if you decide to walk on a normal evening. The passing diesel bus adds an extra something to the noise and pollution. I really enjoyed being able to walk all over the street, enjoy the lower levels of pollution in the air, and hear just the conversations of other groups of people passing by. I'll close with a little remark about open streets. Some people will complain that this isn't an open street. It's a street closed to SUVs. But it's not the SUVs who are seeing the lights. It's the people. In this still, there are eight vehicles. The North American average is usually 1.2 people per vehicle, but this is a special event, so maybe the vehicles are averaging three or four people. Also, due to the low speeds, the vehicles can be very close together. That means this stretch of street is about at capacity, but there are only 20 to 30 people. You can easily fit that many people in one of these sleighs. It's a bit difficult to see at this angle, but there are about as many people in this video as there were in the previous image of the vehicles. And the street doesn't appear to be near capacity at all. Actually, in this image, there might be more people on the sidewalk than in the SUVs over the same distance away from me. The above seasonal temperatures probably help get more people out this year, but there are warming fires run by volunteers every block for anyone who does get cold. People also avoid optional driving trips when it's cold or snowy as well. Feel free to leave a comment, letting others know if you prefer events like this to be open to SUVs or open to people. Thanks for watching.